before looking at an example workflow, let's look at the degrees of difficulty when managing change throughout the project lifecycle. Change can be easy, but as the ship progresses through the design, build and maintain phases, it becomes increasingly more difficult. When working on the initial design of a ship, designs haven't been released yet. Comprehensive management is not required at this stage. Designers have the freedom to make changes without the burden of process. They can simply perform a local clash check, find a mistake, fix it, all before the block is released to production. Once several blocks have been issued for production, we may get a late design change. But the documentation will have already been released downstream and will need to be updated and reissued to the relevant stakeholders. This includes procurement, production, and the classification societies. Then we have the initial design for the second vessel of class, where the original hull is used as the baseline for the first of possibly many sister ships. In this case, when we make a change to the second ship, we need to decide if those changes are also applicable to the original ship. Often when building a class of ships, the first ship will only be half built when the yard starts cutting steel for the second ship. Any changes made to that first ship, such as production driven changes, will need to be seamlessly incorporated into the sister ships in the class. Finally, the most challenging scenario, managing the configurations of multiple hulls. Multiple sets of drawings have been issued. The changes may need to be incorporated of some of the sister ships, but not others, and sister ships may have different configurations affecting the change. Because of the different configurations, some ships may require supplementary changes compared to the baseline ship. The downstream impacts all need to be understood and tracked. To overcome these challenges, we need to reuse existing modelling work and incorporate changes and improvements to follow on ships. In the example here, the circle change made to ship one is applicable to all the ships. The blue square change made to ship two is applicable to the follow on ships. The triangle change made to ship three needs to be made to ship one, however, because the square change affects the arrangement, the triangle change requires supplementary changes. The typical workflow for the change seems simple enough. The problem is usually identified in a problem identification report, commonly called a PIR. It may have originated from customer request, production department request from the supply chain, following a design review. An engineering change request or ECR is placed by an initiator. The initiator could be the customer, engineering team, or anyone else involved in the product development. The ECR refines possible solutions and decisions regarding the change. Following a design review and approval conducted between the design authority and review board, a solution is proposed and documented as an engineering change order, commonly called an ECO. Once the ECO, ECHO as we call it in Australia, is registered, the changes can be executed. The change could be registered using an ad hoc process such as spreadsheet, access database, other disconnected process, or through a PLM system. When completed, the change may need to be transferred and replicated to sister ships in the class. Problems usually occur when designers use disconnected processes. What may seem like a simple enough change will have flow-on effects. This means different models, drawings, nests, filler materials all need to be updated, reviewed, delivered and carefully managed. Ideally, there will be a single source of truth for manufacturing information or documentation will need to be updated individually. The drill feeders on this 80 metre anchor handling tug need to be repositioned in or to improve performance based on the sea trials of a previous design. Once reviewed and approved, the changes will be transferred to the sister ships in the class. This includes model changes, drawing changes, and updating the billet materials. PLM systems can systematically improve the way data is managed. However, it isn't the only way to improve how we manage change. With an understanding of how change flows through the organisation, we can identify the major causes of rework and make incremental workflow changes to improve the process.